side, no gracious words we hear of him who spoke as none there spoke, yet we believe him. Joseph Harmon. I'm the uh, priest of the Oratory of St. Thomas Becket here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, but I'm recording this Mass today on behalf of the American National Catholic Community of St. Francis of Assisi in Glen Ridge, New Jersey. I'm glad that uh, I'm able to be with uh, my colleagues and friends there in, uh, in New Jersey while uh, Bishop George takes uh, a well-deserved time off. I ask you to remember him in your prayers uh, as uh, we uh, uh, celebrate this time uh, this week. Let us begin as we always do, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today's readings invite us to reflect on the coincidence of our quest for eternal life, and our desire for perfection. We'll say a little bit more about that later. Let us pause now and call to mind our sin, the ways in which we have offended one another and offended God, and let us ask God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the throne of grace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father of light, giver of every good and perfect gift, Bring to fruition the word of truth sown in our hearts by your Son, that we may rightly understand your commandments, live your law of love, and so offer you worship that is pure and undefiled. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Here now a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, by a sudden blow I am taking away from you the delight of your eyes. But do not mourn or weep or shed any tears. Groan in silence, make no lament for the dead. Bind on your turban, put your sandals on your feet. Do not cover your beard and do not eat the customary bread. That evening my wife died, and the next morning I did as I had been commanded. Then the people asked me, Will you not tell us what all these things that you are doing mean for us? I therefore spoke to the people that morning, saying to them, Thus the word of the Lord came to me. Say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, I will now desecrate my sanctuary, the stronghold of your pride, the delight of your eyes, the desire of your soul. The sons and daughters you left behind shall fall by the sword. Ezekiel shall be a sign for you. All that he did you shall do when it happens. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. You shall do as I have done, not covering your beards nor eating the customary bread. Your turbans shall remain on your heads, your sandals on your feet. You shall not mourn or weep, but you shall rot away. Because of your sins, 
and you shall groan one to another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response of the psalm is, You have forgotten God who gave you birth. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. You are unmindful of the rock that begot you. You forgot the God who gave you birth. When the Lord saw this, he was filled with loathing and anger toward his sons and daughters. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. I will hide my face from them, he said, and see what will then become of them. What a fickle race they are, sons with no loyalty in them. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. Since they have provoked me with their no God and angered me with their vain idols, I will provoke them with a no people, with a foolish nation, I will anger them. You have forgotten God who gave you birth. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. A young man came to Jesus and said, Teacher, what good must I do to gain eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you ask me about the good? There is only one who is good. If you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. He asked him, Which ones? And Jesus replied, You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All of these I have observed. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you wish to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this statement, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we hear this very strange reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, and to sum it up in short, it, it is how God is not happy that the people have placed their own interests above his, that they have placed their own interests above the good of each other. And so God, through Ezekiel, is saying that just like the delight of Ezekiel's eyes, a way of referring to his wife who died, so shall all those things that the, the Hebrew people enjoyed and loved, those, those two shall go away, and that the people left in the exile back home, they will die by the sword. A terrible, terrible prediction and prophecy. Um, but at the heart of it, at the root of it, is that, that God is upset that we put things above him, that we put things above. Uh, above each other. And, and so um, we, we come today to, to talk a moment about the struggle we have sometimes between eternal life and the quest for moral perfection. Eternal life isn't just about how we live after we die. Uh, eternal life is about how we live right now. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have abundant life. And he said that meaning right now. Christian believers don't have to wait for eternal life because it's not something that starts when they die. 
Rather, eternal life begins the moment we exercise faith in Jesus Christ. It's our current possession. In the third chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Not some distant time in the future, right now. The verb in both the English and the Greek is a present tense verb. Whoever has life, whoever believes, has life. That is, right now, present tense. And that is why what the rich young man in today's gospel seems to have been seeking. He comes to Jesus and says, Lord, what must I do to have eternal life? Jesus asks him about, are you keeping the commandments? And the young man wants to know, so which ones? Sounds so much like us, doesn't it? We, we want to know exactly what is the roadmap to eternal life. Exactly what must I do to get there? And so Jesus rehearses these things we already know from the Ten Commandments. Don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness, honor mother and father, love your neighbor as yourself. These are things we've all heard before, and even people of no faith tend to observe most of them. We, we like these commandments, even if we know we sometimes observe them more in the breach than in reality. We like them because they tend to give us something of a moral guide to this thing called eternal life. It's sort of feeding into what the rich young man was asking, what must I do? And, and like us, the rich man bragged and said, well, yes, I, I got it. I, I do these things. So what, Jesus, what's missing? And here comes the rub for both the young man and for almost all of us. Jesus says, listen, if you wish to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor. Then come follow me. Wow. This was something the young man just couldn't do. Why? Well, perhaps because like many of us, he confused the love of things for the love of people. Now, to be clear, Jesus doesn't say that being rich is evil. It's by how we get rich and how we use our money, our possessions, that evil can enter in. Remember, St. Paul never said that money is the root of evil. What he said is that the love of money is the root of all evil. When we love money, when we become so attached to the love of our possessions that we can't part with them, we often become blind to the reality that we have used people to satisfy our selfishness. Whether it's in the accumulation of business where fraud and corruption can be rampant or the sexual exploitation of others, especially women and children, or the insistence that essential workers, even school teachers, must work during this current pandemic without regard for their health and safety. All these are subtle but real ways in which our love of things disrupts our relationship with others. Oh yes, and by the way, our relationship with God. It is that relationship that Jesus calls us to rebalance, to really convert it, to restore the way God calls us to live in his new kingdom, his new reign, his new way of living, wherein we find eternal life right now. Not in some distant space and time or after we die, but beginning here, beginning right here, beginning right where we are, right here, right now. Now, in calling the young man to be perfect, Jesus isn't calling him or us to a moral perfection something our original sin makes impossible. He is calling the young man and each of us to something more, to go further in our practice of the faith, to go beyond mere appearances to live a fuller, more complete life. It's unfortunate that the Greek word teleos has almost consistently been translated in the gospel as the word perfect. And so we hear Jesus saying, if you wish to be perfect, it comes, we, we think, because the Vulgate Latin translation of this Greek word was perfectus, 
which even in Latin doesn't have the same connotations of our English use of the word perfect. We find a, a much better understanding of what Jesus meant when we look at other writings in the New Testament. For example, in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, Paul says, Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom. And again, in Philippians, the third chapter, he writes, Let those of us, then, who are mature be of the same mind. Once again, in the first chapter of the book of James, we hear, Let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete. In each case, the word mature translates the Greek word teleios. So teleios, that is perfection, is not so much about moral perfection, but about being mature, being whole, being complete. We are living in a very fractious time in so many different ways right now. And one of the things that we're all going through in one way or another is, is transition. And as we go through this process of transition, it's important that we be present that we be present to God and be aware of God's presence with us. It's important also that we be present with each other. In this process of transition, going through these, these changes that we're all being challenged to do, it's so important that, we, important that we rebalance our understanding, that we are not to love things and use people, but we are to love people and use things. This is what Jesus is calling the young man to when he tells him to part with his possessions so he might live a more mature, more whole and complete life following Jesus. It's the same invitation and challenge Jesus gives each of us to rebalance our relationships with the things we love and the people we often sadly use. To replace that with a love for people and the use of things. So that we love God and one another and only use things. When we do this, we begin to live the eternal life the young man and so many of us desire and seek. What are the things you are afraid to let go of now so that you might have a more mature and complete relationship with God and with others in your life right now? May you think about that. May you consider those things. May you Invite yourself more and more into God's presence as we continue the celebration of Holy Mass. Let's call to mind those who have asked our prayers and our own needs and concerns. Knowing that God hears our prayers when they are made in sincerity and humility. And so we pray for the church and our world in our time of need, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Those who live justly will live in the presence of God. We pray for our church, that its structures promote justice, its laws foster integrity of heart, and its ministry model compassion. To you we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who live justly will live in the presence of God. We pray for our world, that we will be free from that hypocrisy which lurks in our hearts when we seek the assurance of external observance without the commitment of faith. To you we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who live justly will live in the presence of God. We pray for those who make and enforce laws, that they may challenge us in our, in our waywardness and be compassionate toward our weakness. To you we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who live justly will live in the presence of God. We pray for those who teach the word of God, that they may embrace the justice of God in their own hearts as they call us into the life of God. To you we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who live justly will live in the presence of God. We pray that we may be delivered from all the wicked designs in the deep recesses of our hearts, and so live justly with God and with one another. To you we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Are there others for whom we should pray and other concerns for which you would offer your prayers? I invite you to speak them at this time. For all these petitions, O Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who live justly will live in the presence of God. We pray for those who have died, that they may dwell with the saints and remember us who struggle to live in justice and peace. To you, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. All just and merciful God, you know our wants and you know our true needs. May you attend to our prayers, direct our hearts in the way of justice and mercy, and enlighten our minds that we may know your holy will. We ask this through the just one, Jesus Christ, your servant and son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the power of the Holy Spirit, our God forever and ever. Amen. brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the Church. Let us pray. Lord God, look with favor on the sacrifice we offer, that the passion of your Son, which we celebrate in these mysteries, may become the pattern of our lives. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. He is the Word through whom you made the universe, the Savior you sent to redeem us. He took flesh by the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. To accomplish your will and gain for you a holy people, he stretched out his arms on the cross that he might break the chains of death and make known the resurrection. And so with one voice we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the fountain of all holiness. 
Send down your Spirit upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again he gave you thanks, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We pray that all of us who share in the body and blood of, our, of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Perfect us in love, together with George, our bishop, with Francis, Bishop of Rome, with Carly, Bishop of Newark, with bishops and all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all who minister to your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the sure hope of rising again. Bring them and all who have died in your mercy into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Francis, with St. Thomas, and with the apostles and with all the saints who have found favor with you throughout the ages. In union with them, may we praise you and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and taught by and and uh, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us in time of all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. As is appropriate, I invite you to share with one another signs of God's peace as we say, The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. In this union with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Jesus Christ, our hope in your love and grace, Lord, we give thanks to you and love that is not turned into diminution, but kept with you. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be filled. For those who desire but are not now able to receive the blessed sacrament, I invite you to pray with me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. have been given for all that we have received let us offer our thanks let us pray Lord God look with favor on the sacrifice I'm sorry let us pray God of blessings we have been fed at this table with the bread of heaven give us this food always that it may strengthen your love in our hearts and inspire us to serve you in our brothers and sisters we ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord Amen. Let us bow our heads as we ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank <laughs> you.